Great plan. <laughs> so what we want to do is present some new ideas, some new concepts uh, that will help us do the thing that God commanded us to do. And the original charge in Genesis was to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish. And you would get this thing called dominion in order to be able to execute all of that. And so when we look around, how much dominion do we see the people of God have it? I must, you know, so because it is a form, you can talk back. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not church, not a conference. You know, part of the reason why it's small and intimate is so that we can talk back. Our preference is that you come away with something that you can integrate into your life and implement when you leave. And so we want understanding to take place. The Hebrew concept of understanding, you know, and in the book of Proverbs, when they talk about wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, the Hebrew word of understanding is the word benam. And so it's very different when you look at things from a Hebraic perspective because, you know, if <clears throat> Chris has got a ThinkPad, so I understand how to operate a ThinkPad. So I have comprehension of that. But in Hebrew, it's completely different. In Hebrew, it's the development of the skill of both the hand and the mind for the continuation of your house or your lineage. So when God is thinking about something, he's always thinking about continuance. He's always thinking about one generation to the next. And so <clears throat> as leaders, that's how we need to begin to think. God had this entity in scripture. It's called the king priest. Anybody? You familiar with that term? Not familiar with that term? Anybody not familiar with that term? Okay. So <clears throat> everybody's heard of Abram, Abraham. Mm -hmm. So in Western Christianity, probably next to Jesus, Abraham is the most significant individual in scripture. So God shows up to Abe and he tells Abe to leave, don't take anybody with him, and he takes his nephew with him. He actually took his father and his nephew. His father got ill. He got to the place called Haran. They couldn't go any further. Abe decided not to go any further until his father passed. <clears throat> and so then from the time that God told Abe to leave until he got to Haran and his father passed, he never heard from God again. He wasn't supposed to take his father. <clears throat> so when you do things that you're not supposed to do, it impacts the timing of things. Right? So... His father dies, he resumes the journey with his nephew, right? He gets to a particular place. And so Abe, how they measure wealth back in the day was by your land and your lifestyle. You know, Bank of America didn't exist back then, you know, so wealth was mobile. So <clears throat> Lot gets in, Lot's people, their, their, their blessing of God is on Abram and his nephew. And, their wealth, their, their livestock is expanding. So <coughs> natural resources are limited. So their staff, if you will, get in a fight about the water. So it's limited. So Abe being the elder and Lot being the nephew, Abe should have chose first, but he gave his nephew first choice. So the nephew, the Bible says, pitched his tent towards Sodom. His view was towards Sodom. <coughs> so he goes into Sodom. When Sodom is taken over, his nephew is taken captive. So Abe gets word that his nephew is taken captive. So Abe has a couple of guys that he's in covenant with, Anar and Eshkol. And <clears throat> there are five kings that Abe goes to get his nephew back. And so Abe, right? This principle for us. He has 318 men in his house that he's trained. How many men have we trained in our houses to go to war with us when we need to go to war? So that's a kingdom centric perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, when we go to war, sometimes it's just the guy with the microphone. I'm glad I put it down. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But he was got 318 guys, the book says, that he trained. 
even delegate the training of the men to anybody else when he's out the books at age eight, eight training. So anyway, going with the story, so Abe, his crew, the two guys that he's in covenant with their crew, they defeat five armies just to get his nephew back. So now he's in this particular place, the book says it's called the Kingsville. The battle is over, the Kingsville. The battle is over, right? Abe has defeated these five kings. And this figure shows up. His name is Melchizedek. The Bible says that this guy, Melchizedek, was priest of God Most High. So one of the things that we have to do as citizens of the kingdom, we have to begin to pay attention when God's names are mentioned. In Acts, it says of this guy, Melchizedek, he said, I'm not going to tell you anything about him because you're not mature enough to know. So I said to God, I said, that's not fair. And he said, study what you do know about him. So the first time this phrase, king priest, is used in scripture, it's ascribed to this guy. He is literally king of a particular territory. The place is called Salem. We call it Jerusalem today. So long before any Hebrew ever set foot in that spot, this guy, Melchizedek, was king. The Bible describes Melchizedek as the first person to ever use the name El Elyon, God Most High. He's the first guy in scripture described as a priest of God Most High. So some of our thinking about what we, some of, some of the things that we've been told about scripture are from a Western perspective, but they're not necessarily biblical. So I often tell people God's not an American. He doesn't speak English. He didn't grow up in our neighborhoods and attend our schools. So because of that, when we read the book, we have to adjust our cultural perspective and go back to, to the culture when these things are actually taking place. We have to, you know, exert a little energy and transition from our culture to a culture that is almost 180 degrees from ours, you know? So one of the things that we wanted to deal with in this first session is why is that important? Because if there's a concept that's out there and I don't understand the concept and I begin to implement things according to the concept that is wrong, we call that a misconception. So when you, you think of you know, birth, 